College of Education, Nogao. Welcome to the YouTube channel, Academic Learning. Uh, so today I am uh, here to discuss uh, the topic uh, known as the major laws of learning. Now, uh, before going into the major laws of learning, we have to understand the theoretical principles on the basis of which these laws were formulated. Okay, so uh, as we all know, the trial and error theory of learning was initiated by Edward Lee Thorndike. So he did a lot. He did many experiments with uh, animals like cats, rats, uh, birds. Okay, and uh, from these experiments, he came to four basic theoretical principles. He concluded that there are four uh, theoretical principles that forms the basis of this trial and error theory. The first one is learning involves trial and error. Now, uh, John Dyke said that uh, he named his experimental cats, rats as trial and error children. He said that learning is stamping in of the correct responses and stamping out of incorrect responses. That is the trial and error. What we do, whenever we learn something or whenever we are confronted with a new problem, we uh, try something, we try a new solution. Okay, that is known as try. And when we try the solution, we often make mistakes. There are errors that we commit. So uh, finally, we learn that these are the incorrect responses or the errors that we have made. And what we do, we try to eliminate those errors. And we always try to fix or we select the correct response. So that is trial and error. So Thorndike said that uh, learning is based on trial and error. It includes selection of the correct response and elimination of all the incorrect responses. He also said that learning is selection and connection. That is selection of the appropriate response and connecting it with the adequate stimuli. Now what is a stimuli? We all know that trial and error theory of learning belongs to the school of connectionism or behaviorism. So the school of behaviorism states that learning is a, uh, learning is, uh, the basis of learning is stimulus response. That is when there is a stimulus, there is a response. So uh, Thorndike said that learning involves selection of the uh, appropriate response and connecting it with the adequate stimuli. That is the first theoretical principle. The second one is learning is the result of formation of connections. Now what are these connections? He said that learning is the result of formation of connections in the nervous system of an individual. We all know in our body the nervous system it works wonders. Whenever we have, suppose we get hurt, uh, if we jab ourselves with a pin, we react immediately, isn't it? We, we say like, oh I got hurt. So that is why does that happen? It is the response to the stimulus. The stimulus is that pain. That, that, that we have jabbed in our skin. So, uh, he said that learning is the formation of connection in the nervous system between the stimulus and response. Thirdly, he said that learning is incremental. Now, what is incremental? It is gradual, phase by phase. Uh, Thorndike said that learning uh, improves as we increase the number of practice repetition. Okay? As we practice, our learning becomes more firm. It becomes more uh, perfect. And he said that learning is incremental, not inside. Fourthly, he said that learning is a direct process. According to Thorndike, learning is direct. It is, it, it is a simple stimulus response kind of mechanism. There is no involvement of cognitive, process, cognitive processes like thinking, reasoning, ideas, etc. etc. So these are the uh, four theoretical principles that form the basis of trial and error theory of learning. So uh, the four major theoretical principles as we discussed. Uh, after that conclusion, Thorndike formulated the three major laws of learning. Now these major laws of learning, they are law of readiness, law of effect and the third law is the law of exercise. Let us discuss the first law of learning. That is the first major law of learning is the law of readiness. Now, uh, the law of readiness, it uh, states or it indicates the learner's state to participate in the learning process. Okay? Readiness, the word readiness is used here by Thorndike. He says that readiness is the key to learning process. According to Thorndike, when a child is ready to learn, he learns more quickly, more effectively and with greater satisfaction as compared to a child who is not ready to learn. 
Okay, so uh, it's quite evident, isn't it? It's our human psychology. Whenever we are ready to do something, we are prepared for something, we do it with more enthusiasm, we do it more perfectly. As compared to the fact that when we are not ready to do something, we do not feel like doing it. So here Thorndike says that when a child is ready to learn, he learns in a uh, more proper manner. Learning is more appropriate and learning is more permanent. Okay. When compared to that, the other uh, the other part is when the child is not ready to learn, he does not uh, he is not he is not uh, he does not learn effectively. So the four uh, major principle theoretical principles that we have discussed on that on the basis of that, Thorndike uh, formulated three major laws of learning. Now these major laws of learning are the first one is the law of readiness. The second one is the law of effect and the third one is the law of exercise. Now the law of readiness, the word readiness is used by Thorndike. Uh, in the first law of learning, he says that readiness is the key to learning process. Okay? It describes the learner's state to participate in the process of learning. According to Thorndike, uh, if a child is ready to learn, he learns more quickly, more effectively and with greater satisfaction as compared to a child when he is not ready to learn. Okay, uh, uh, this clearly shows that uh, the teacher, it is the role of a teacher to identify the learner's state of mind. Okay, it is the teacher who have to make use of, maximum use of the opportunity when the child is prepared to learn. Okay, so uh, the child, the teacher must provide proper learning experiences, okay, uh, deciding or checking on whether the child is ready or not. Okay, uh, apart from that, the teacher should also do not, not forget to motivate or inspire the learner to bring him or make him prepare for learning. This is the first law of learning, that is the law of readiness. The second law of learning is the law of effect. So, Thorndike states that learning takes place more properly when it results in satisfaction and the learner derives pleasure from it. Okay, when a child receives uh, after a piece of learning or an experience of learning, if the child receives satisfaction, pleasure, then the learning is more permanent. Okay? When the child meets failure or when there is a displeasure or any uh, bad experiences, that learning is blocked. So here the here Thorndike emphasizes on the role of rewards and punishment. The second law of learning, it says that uh, whenever a learning experiences gives a kind of reward to the child or a reinforcement. What is reinforcement? Reinforcement is a is something which encourages a learner. It's a kind of a, a reward in the form of a medal or a grade or words of appreciation. So whenever there is a reinforcement or reward given to a child in a learning experiences, the child will remember that piece of learning more permanently and more appropriately. Okay, and when there is punishment, when there is a displeasure, then learning is said to be forgotten or blocked. Okay, this is the second law of learning. Now, this second law of learning, that is the law of effect, was again revised in the year 1930s. So, Thorndike, uh, later on, he realized that the, this law of effect uh, it required certain changes. He said that, he assumed that, yes, satisfaction, pleasure, uh, good experiences did uh, definitely uh, make learning more proper, appropriate, it increased the strength of the SR connection that is a stimulus response connection but he also says, uh, said that punishment or any kind of displeasure did not necessarily make the learning forgotten. Okay, learning was not blocked because previously we said that yes, displeasure led to uh, forgetting of learning but later on he said that uh, any kind of displeasure or dissatisfaction did not necessarily break down the SR connection. So this was the changes that he made in the second law of learning. Now the third law of learning is law of exercise. Now law of exercise has two subparts. That is law of use and law of distance. Now the law of use states that with repetition, with practice, the SR connection is strengthened. That is, whenever we do something, whenever we learn something, if we keep on practicing, if we keep on repeating, then that learning is more permanent. The child learns or remembers it for a very long time. He emphasizes on the role of repetition. The second part is the law of disuse. 
The law of this use says that if you do not practice, if you do not repeat a behavior, that behavior or that learning is forgotten or the learning is blocked. This is the third law of learning. Now again, Thorndike reviewed this third law of learning, he revised it. He said that after 1930s, he realized that yes, repetition, practice did make a learning more perfect, but uh, if there is no repetition, if there is no practice, learning is not blocked. He said that learning might be suppressed, but the child will not forget what he has learned. Okay? Yes, he did emphasize on the role of practice and repetition. He said that practice makes it more perfect. So these are the three laws of learning, that is law of readiness, law of effect and law of exercise, the three major law, laws of learning. So uh, with this, I come to an end to today's class. Uh, I would like you all to give me a sincere feedback, if you liked my class or not, in the comment section. And please do not forget to subscribe to this channel, Academic Learning. Thank you.